Welcome to Rocket Garage, and on today's episode, we are back on the 82 Ford Bronco. We're going to be addressing the steering, the hubs, the suspension, all the front end stuff. Last videos, if you haven't seen them, we addressed the gas tank, the rear end, drive shaft, uh, starter solenoid, hoses, and a couple other things, the hitch. Um, anyways, we're going to try to finish up the suspension and get this truck to be able to drive down the highway again, hopefully very soon. So let's talk about how I've had this truck set up for the last five years, and that's gonna be these Moog F250 Severe Duty coils, Bilstein 5100s, and they're a little long for this setup, but it, I haven't had any complaints out of it. I, I knew that going in, but I never got an alignment. I never changed the camber or put a bushing in it. The caster's probably all whacked out. I got it to drive pretty straight and it doesn't wear the tires out that much. I am eventually gonna go with the 14 inch coilovers that I have sitting over there. But what I wanna do first, because this is my first time building my own suspension like this, is I wanna make everything hard mounted because the coilovers are adjustable and everything. But what I'm gonna do is add a two inch spacer to the bottom of the coil, which I'm really glad that the false advertisement on this spacer comes out to an inch and a half because I wanted a three inch lift on this truck. They make a two and a half inch bolt in lift and then they make a four, six, I think a five and a half, eight. I don't like any of that stuff and I didn't want any drop brackets. I wanted to go with a long travel style kit. Get it set at three inches and then that way I know where the, the camber is gonna sit and how bad the caster is gonna sit. The main complaint people have with the TTB twin traction beam or the I-beam suspension is that the camber and caster get really whacked out if you just start lifting it cheaply. Um, so what we're gonna do is cut the ball joint. This is called a cut and turn. We're gonna cut the bottom ball joint mount out of the TTB housing and we're gonna push it out. And you're gonna keep this zero degree camber in there so when the truck's at the height you want it we're going to make the camber zero and then we'll put the adjustable bushing in there that way we have some playroom once we get uh, the coilovers on if we need a half degree or something they go up to about two degrees so we'll have some playroom there and I'm going to extend the radius arms myself we're going to put some mounts on the frame and we're going to use some two inch 250 wall DON tubing. Obviously it's not gonna be this long, but I mean, it could be if we wanted it to. We're gonna extend it with two inch tubing, put some Himes joints, box all this in, and I'm gonna put a, an aggressive amount of caster in this so when the suspension cycles, it doesn't go negative caster. We want enough caster to where we don't have bump steer when we get the wheels off the ground and then come back and then you have that funny steering bump steer feeling. And eventually I'm gonna do a single swing steering, but that's gonna be further down the road. Should be fairly easy. I know there was probably a lot of information to take in all at once, but essentially I'm not doing the coilovers just yet because I'm a little nervous about cutting my front axle apart and doing the coilovers and making radius arms. So what I wanna do is eliminate that equation and set the front end up solid. This is one and a half inch lift and that is a one and a half inch coil. So it's gonna be three inches. That way when I set it all up, I can get this thing dialed in perfectly. That way when I go to the coilovers, I know my measurements of distance, height, all that that all I have to do is crank the coil over, weld the brackets, and, and I know it's gonna be set right. So this is just my precaution. Most people would probably just blow this apart, but this is my first time cutting my uh, TTB up. So wish me luck. Super simple. I actually didn't even need to disconnect the shock because it's still not fully extended, so. You could tell how much this suspension can travel. There's a washer, there's a nut that holds the coil on. And I am just going to get all the dirt. 
This is the absolute cheapest way you could do this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Coil spacers are in. That's wild. So that is the new camber. So I started on the passenger side, that way I don't have to deal with the differential. Got it freed up from the ball joints, calipers, rotors, hubs, spindle, tie rod, axle shafts. Obviously the ball joints are knocked free. And the one thing we have to make sure is that we keep that slit right there. That thing is hot. I can feel it from over here. Keep that slit where it was from the factory. That way we know everything goes back together. And I tried my best not to mar up these ball joints because they don't really move. And I'm hoping to set up everything the way it was. That way I can cut it, weld it, put it back together without destroying the new stuff. Mmm, yummy. Uh. Oh. Same day, different shirt. That's okay. You'll have that on them big jobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What we are doing now is taking the radius arm nuts or bolts, whatever you want to call them, taking those off. Set y'all down. I should take the shock off, but I'm going to be lazy about it and then complain later that I should have took it off. Beautiful. Oh, that's perfect. No. Oh. Lunch. It's all coming together. <laughs> Even if I wasn't cutting the beam, this would have been a really smart move. It's probably why I had uh, some death wobble on the highway. That's, uh, yeah. That's... Hello. Yeah, it's finally setting in that I'm about to cut the front beam on my truck that essentially, if I fix the steering, would drive down the road great. So, do I cut it? Yeah, I'm gonna cut it. Three, two, one.
There is absolutely no turning back now. Put a new bushing on the pivot and we have the spindle. I did check the bushing. It says zero degree camber, which is perfect. Here is a three quarter inch bolt. Everything is set up. I have it. Let me just let go of that. I measured from the top of the ball joint flange right here on the housing to the top of the coil bucket spring mount and it is 16 and a quarter that side was 16 and a quarter uh, so i put it there that is where the truck is going to ride and you can see now i have some good space between the bump stop put four tacks in it i ended up putting a washer because that would be equivalent to seven eighths of an inch and i just left it crooked um don't get no better than that zero degree bushing if it turns out like that once i'm done hey i won't even need to put a bushing in it and you can see where the steering stop is now used to hit here now it's going to hit here interesting So to get the third member out of these four TTBs, undo all the front diff bolts. And essentially this axle is the diff cover. And then there's two bolts right there on the side of the case. And I didn't show this, but I have an 82 Ford Bronco, which means I have a three bolt non C-clip diff. So if you want to put a locker in one of these 80 to 96 Ford trucks, Try to get one with a three bolt. That way you don't have to mess with the C-clips and the springs and all that and modify your diff. This is, this is choice. Now, if you're ever wondering what a lunchbox locker looks like, this is a Spartan locker. See how it's got the ratchets? This thing is, I'm not gonna say indestructible, but they're very strong and especially in a front diff where they're not always being used. They last probably almost forever. This thing's been in there for five years and never changed the fluid once I did it. I mean, the fluid looked amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Clean. They're strong. They're easy. They're very simple, especially with lockout hubs. You can unlock one side if you're having a little bit of trouble on the trail. This is an upgrade. If you don't have a locker in your 80 to 96, actually any truck, Put a lunchbox in the front. You'll thank me. I think that's gonna be it for this video. We've got both beams tore out of the truck. We've got the ball joints cut out and positioned with practically zero camber, which is nice. The, if it's not perfect, I have the adjustable camber bushings, but this is extremely close to where it needs to be. We've got the lower ball joints tacked in place. I'm going to keep working and I'll just make another video of this, but we're gonna weld this up, plate this hole, plate over the bottom of the beam, 
add some triangles for gussets on the ball joint, and then we're going to weld up the inside and plate the inside as well. And that should be plenty strong to not bend the ball joint or break the ball joint off. So as well as I got the original style bushings reinstalled, that way everything is, is as tight as can be. Now, the reason why I'm gonna call this like a mid-travel kit, um, actually we're gonna call this a poor man's long travel kit. Essentially, we lifted the truck very cheaply, extended the ball joint to get the camber back in line, and I'm going to do extended uh, radius arms, but if I really wanted this thing to to flex out or, or to droop and have a bunch of travel, I would put uniballs right here because the uniballs plus the heim joints on the radius arms would give this thing, if you clearanced everything, drive shaft and U-joints and the housings, you'd probably get in the low 20s, 19, 20, 21. I, I've seen articles that people have gotten like 21 inches. So how true that is, I don't know, but this is my first stab at it, and I know the stock bushings are going to be the limiting factor because they don't really have the range of motion as a uniball would have, but that's okay. I'm looking for 15 or 16 inches of travel, and everything that I'm doing, I, I feel like this is going to be pretty darn close. Another thing before I put this truck back together is this is where the axle shaft comes out of the diff, goes over to the passenger side and comes through this window right here in the housing. I'm going to clearance this if I have to. Depending on where the shocks limit out and uh, how far it actually swings with the bushings, I might not have to, I might, you know, get away with it, but I'm looking for 15 inches of travel at least. And I think what I'm doing is going to get me there. Um, Anyways, next video, we are going to be plating these, reinstalling everything, checking for clearance, and then moving on to radius arms. See y'all.